burning away the virus is what some people considered was the only option to save Manhattan. Joseph Farrow, the one we know as Joe Farrow, was the first to suggest it and soon he founded the cleaners and his dream was ready to become a reality. Let's start at the beginning. Joe Farrow, a sanitation worker, lives very happily in Manhattan with his wife. Then, boom, the outbreak happens. Millions get sick, including his wife. Tragically, she passes, sparking the fire for Farrow's rampage. Pun intended. Not soon after, he rings his niece. He tells her that he's going to be on the radio soon and people might say bad things about him that might not be true. But he wants her to remember that he did it all for her because he loves her very much. Next thing we know, he's on a radio call where he's talking about the dollar flu. The explanation of what follows is also the red wire that forms the foundation of the cleaners. Next thing you know, he founds the cleaners with a purpose to eradicate the green poison by any means necessary, thinking he's the protagonist of his own story. The hero that is strong enough to make the quote-unquote hard choices. Sounds like we have an old time on the line, Joseph Farrell. Hey Joe, what's your take on the dollar flu? I think this really shows how vulnerable this country is. I mean, how stupid you have to be not to go to the hospital when you're sick as a dog. We got people going to work, to the supermarket, even to the goddamn movies, infecting thousands of other people out of pure ignorance. I'm telling you, this is gonna blow up big time. Just because most people are too damn stupid to realize what's going on. There's no one with the balls, not the government, not nobody, and the brains to do what's gotta be done to keep this from spreading. Sorry to cut you off there, Joe. Thanks as always for your thoughts. But why the fire? He has a response for that too. This is not rocket science. You don't need a degree from some fancy college to understand exactly what's going on here. This virus is going to continue to spread as long as there are infected people walking around. Now you can put up all the fences and checkpoints you want, but that's not going to stop a virus. You want to kill it? You have to burn it. Destroy it completely and before it can spread. Now, we have the equipment we need to take care of this and the guts to do what nobody else has a sack to. It's not going to be easy. And they're not going to understand we're doing this for the greater good. But when it's over and we've stopped this thing right here, they'll thank us. The cleaners are former sanitation workers, thinking of garbage men, janitors, custodians, all with a mind similar to Pharaoh's. Once you're part of the cleaners, you get divided in one of six classes. The sweeper, fumigator, shield, controller, mechanic and incinerator, each with their own unique weapons and loadouts. Following the foundation of the cleaners, there's a briefing session where Joe Farrow is talking to his henchmen Kosinski, Martinez, Rogan and possibly Benchley too, I know he was there. Each is tasked with the destruction of a certain area. Kosinski, an incinerator, is sent to burn down Abel's apartment store in Broadway Emporium where Reed collects a sample of the fires for Dr. Kendall. Martinez, a mechanic, was tasked with controlling the shantytown full of refugees or what we would know as the Hudson refugee camp. Rogan, a controller, was sent to Amherst's apartment, burning down everything right there where the virus was planned out and possibly created. I wonder if they knew. And the final assignment was for Benchley, an incinerator tasked with burning down the subway mark because of the high concentration of deceased people over there, logically caused by the green poison. So Joe Farrow's plan was to just eradicate every and all traces of the green poison. Task by task, they are opposed and defeated by the Strategic Homeland Division, or ASHD, better known as us, leading to the inevitable confrontation in Farrow's headquarters, the Napalm Production Site. 
The goal was stopping the production of napalm once and for all and demoralizing the cleaners by taking out their leader, Mr. Farrow himself. No easy task, because if Snorlax was a fire type, this is what he would look like. That man is a beast! But in the end, even Pharaoh himself was no match for the SHD, resulting in his inevitable death and the loss of their main source of napalm. The cleaners no longer formed a threat. That was until the scattered groups of cleaners banded together to form a last stand, but their efforts were in vain. Resistance was put up in the form of the four horsemen, famine, death, pestilence and war, but even the four horsemen didn't stand a chance. Finally, they ironically rebuilt a fire truck to spew flames and launch incendiary missiles, all within the team of the cleaners of course. A valiant effort, but nonetheless in vain. After that, the cleaners haven't shown any form of threat towards the SHD. Pharaoh, the cleaners, the four horsemen and the fire truck were awesome adversaries if you ask me, but in the end, simply no match. What did you think about Pharaoh, the cleaners and their way of thinking? Do you agree with them or are you glad they are out of the picture? Of course, besides that we have other factions that you could agree with. The LMB, Rioters, Rikers, Division themselves, Rogue Agents. But what did you think about the Cleaners? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know too. I hope to see you in the future videos. And for now, peace out.